Hello, Edu Magicians. Welcome to the Edu Magic Podcast with your host, Dr. Sam Fesich. Dr. Sam is a professor of education, author of Edu Magic, and a pumpkin spice latte fan. This podcast is designed for pre service teachers. Remember, friends, teaching doesn't begin at graduation, but during that first class at 8 a.m. Let's get this party started. I'm Brian Carpenter, host of Fresh Air at Five, a part of the Education Podcast Network, just like the show you're listening to now. Shows on the network are individually owned and opinions expressed may not reflect others. Find other interesting education podcasts at edupodcastnetwork.com. Yep, that's how we do it. Hello, Edgy Magicians, and welcome back to the Edgy Magic Podcast. My name is Dr. Sam Pesich, and today we're talking all about self-care. And you know, if you listened to episodes before, that this is an area that I wish that I knew more about as a future teacher and as a new teacher. Today, I have with me Teresa Molito Connors, who's going to be sharing all about self-care, what it is, how to get started, and very easy, actionable steps that you can do today, tomorrow, next week during student teaching, field, or or if you're a current college student, rocking it out with your college courses. Dr. Molito Connors, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Dr. Samantha. I'm excited to be here. Yay, I'm excited to have you on too. Friends, I checked out her website. Oh my gosh, it is so much fun. When you get into her site, you're going to have a great time checking out all of her resources and uh, ways to contact Dr. Teresa, but we'll save that for the end. So Dr. Melito Connors, can you please share, let's start off with the basics. What What is self-care? And let's also focus on it's not selfish, right? Yes, it is not selfish. And there's a lot of misconceptions and like bad info out there about self-care, right? You know, society makes us feel that it's selfish or that, you know, it's a luxury. It's something other people need. It's not something we need. So at the Self-Care Cabaret, uh, which is my business, Dr. MC's Self-Care Cabaret, we really talk about the true meaning of self-care, which is not Mani petties, bubble baths, expensive (laughs) spa days, like that, that ain't it. (laughs) The real definition is really that that foundational work that you do to figure out what it is you need to be successful and show up as the best you possible. So we like to look at different domains and different areas and everyone has areas of strengths and weakness, but we can kind of start kind of where we're at. And the cool thing about self-care is you get to decide what's going to work best for you and your body and how different things and different practices make you feel. And there's so much to choose from. And the really good thing is that just a little bit can actually go a long way. Oh, I love that. I'm excited to get started. So how do we check in with ourselves to see what is the best form of self-care? What are those domains that you're referring to? Yeah. So we tend to just be very disconnected from our from our body in general. We run around and especially educators, pre-service teachers, new yes. teachers, even <laughs> veteran teachers. Like, you know, we run around crazy. We we don't attend to our kind of basic needs. We don't manage our stress. We keep going. We wear our busyness as a badge of honor. We keep pushing mm-hmm. and pushing. We sign up for more committees. We want to do all the things and we know why we're there. And so we do it under, you know, the umbrella of we're doing it for the kids, which is great. But self-care is really other care. So if you actually can flip that and prioritize yourself first, it's going to be better for your students. Your students are not going to respond well to a stressed out, frazzled, overwhelmed teacher. They can feel that Mm -hmm. energy. Yeah. So when we look at the different domains, we can consider, you know, how we feed ourselves, how we hydrate. Do we eat during the day? Do we skip our lunch break? And I know they're, they're quick in a school. <laughs> you barely get a couple minutes, but you still have to eat and hydrate throughout the day. Then you want to look at how you move your body. Do you move your body in ways that are joyful? Like what feels good to you for movement? Yeah. Then we look at how we soothe ourselves. What type of stress management tools do you use? And even simple things like deep breathing can be really, really powerful. And we look more at like some self-mindfulness and self-awareness and mindfulness, how we stay grounded in the work that we're doing, how we rest, our relationships, how we care for our physical body, how we treat ourselves, our self-compassion domain. A lot of times we can just be really hard on ourselves. And especially, you know, as a new teacher, you're trying to prove yourself. You want to be all the things and, and be perfect and awesome. And 
that can be really difficult if you're not practicing self-compassion. And then we also look at the environment, like what in your environment is impacting your kind of well-being? Is your space chaotic? Is your classroom a disaster? Mm -hmm. Is it organized? Like what's going on there? And in your living environments as well. And then lastly, but certainly not least, is the spiritual domain. And educators tend to do really, really well in this domain because we know (laughs) that the work we do is so important. We know why we show up every day. We can see the benefits of it. So when we look at that domain, though, we want to just make sure that we're feeling inspired and that we understand our bigger purpose and that there's meaning in our work. So that's a really quick overview of the 10 domains. Are those domains in order of any of importance or anything, or are they just, you, you check in throughout the day, um, how you're doing with the different 10 domains? Yeah. So that research actually comes from Dr. Cook Cotton and they're not in any particular um, order. And, and this is, this is important though, to remember I'm not saying that you have to do all 10 domains every single day, because that probably is going to feel very overwhelming (laughs) to your listeners. (laughs) But those are the different areas to consider when you're thinking about your own routine. But perhaps there's one place you can focus. Like maybe you just heard that overview and you're thinking, oh, rest. I struggle so much with my sleep. So maybe that's a domain where you can focus because really good quality sleep is super important for kids and adults. Um, And, you know, as adults, we need seven to nine hours per night. We do. Not a cumulative total. (laughs) So (laughs) (laughs) So if you're, you know, if that's an area you struggle and many people do, that's a place you can start. So how can we work to invite more, you know, good quality rest into our routines? And then you can build on that from there. Maybe you realize you don't hydrate throughout the day. That's a simple, yeah, <laughs> that's a simple thing to start working on. Mm-hmm. I love how you mentioned rest because oftentimes as college students, they wear this badge of honor. Of, oh, I pulled an all nighter. Mm. I did that assignment. I stayed up so late or I didn't get to bed till 3 a.m., 4 a.m. and they have an eight o'clock class. So it's really important to keep in mind these self-care strategies, even if you are a college student and going to courses and doing fields and student teaching, but also throughout your college career, throughout your student teaching and as a first year teacher, these are skills that are going to help support you throughout. Absolutely. And one of the things I always say is, you know, we've done a lot of school, Dr. Sam, you and I, right? We've done, we went all the way through PhD programs. We've done, (laughs) so we know how to do school. And I can tell you, I've never pulled an all-nighter. I've never sacrificed sleep Mm -hmm. because I know for me, I I am a nightmare if I don't get my like eight hours of sleep. I need my minimum of eight to be productive. (laughs) Yes, absolutely. So I knew even through the doctoral program, which was incredibly intense and challenging and, you know, really a lot of things I didn't keep up with. I'll be, I'll be honest. It wasn't perfect, but I did never sacrifice sleep. And I do believe that that contributed to my being successful and able to get through it. I I agree so much with uh, with the importance of having a good quality night uh, night sleep. It's going to help you show up for yourself and show up for those students that you have in front of you. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. I tell my husband I need my eight hours. So I go to bed like super early. Like I'm, I'm like on a little kid schedule, and I'm okay. With that. <laughs> I'm up at like six a.m. ready to roll. <laughs> yeah. No. Absolutely. Sometimes it's like eight o'clock, and my husband and I are like. Let's go to bed. <laughs> it's, it's done. Yeah. Even if you don't fall asleep right away, at least like you're in the bedroom, you're relaxing, you're chilling, yes. maybe you're, you know, whatever, doing something. But it, yeah, it's definitely like get to bed early. <laughs> for sure. For sure. Yeah. So all these different domains, what are some ways, you know, we can check in with ourselves throughout the day? Are there any strategies that you recommend to reflect on how you're feeling throughout the day to kind of do in the moment self-care? Absolutely. I recommend basic deep breathing throughout the day and just checking in with yourself. Mm. And for basic deep breathing, you know, three deep breaths in through your nose, a long exhale. Here's a pro tip. If you make your exhale longer than your inhale, you actually activate your parasympathetic nervous system, which is your rest and digest response. So super easy. And I always like a lot of things I talk about are free and quick and efficient, like who doesn't love that? 
as future teachers, we specialize in free. So absolutely free. And we'll say that again, these things are free that you can do. So, you know, some deep breathing or even just as a really great mindfulness technique that's called um, the stop method. And all that is, is just giving yourself that intentional pause. You know, you might start to feel the stress rising or, you know, your face is starting to get a little, little warm and you think, you know, you're, oh, I got to do whatever next. And just practice stop, which is stop what you're doing. Take a breath in through your nose, out through your mouth, observe your inner and outer worlds, and then proceed. So just giving yourself that like beat, that intentional pause before moving on to the ne- next task can be really helpful. And that's great for in the moment teaching as well. If you're finding, oh my gosh, this lesson is not plan, it's not going according to plan. <laughs> and that can be a stressful time. I like that stop method. That's fantastic. Yeah. And the other thing too, like, don't be afraid to do it with your students. Like, I think sometimes there's a, there's a, I don't know, an awkwardness or just like a, oh, well, you know, this is self-care is for me. And it is, but if you practice it, you model it, you promote it for your students, that's going to help them teach them those skills, those mindfulness Mm -hmm. skills, get everybody up for a quick dance party, get that energy moving, do some deep breathing together, do some gentle stretching. That's always going to help them too. So when we think about, you know, social emotional learning and, and all of that, like it's all part of it. And even for leaders also, like that was my dissertation study was looking at self-care renewal for leaders and how they need to practice it for themselves and then promote it for their staff and then the teachers doing the same for the students and that wouldn't that be nice oh <laughs> we gosh, could all just a do nice that. sequence there of right. everyone practicing that mindfulness in your research did you find any schools that are doing SEL and mindfulness learning really well like model schools yeah there were definitely some I don't know There was, I didn't find what I was looking for, which is really like a robust kind of program that really was top down Mm -hmm. that teachers and that leaders would promote it for their staff. And then really, I really wanted to see like, maybe I'll do one someday, like a longitudinal study too, to like, see how this changes the culture over time, because Mm -hmm. schools are busy places. There's a lot going on. And, you know, you may have a leader that's great but then you know they may say on on one hand oh we you know i'm i'm all for teacher well-being but then on the other hand the expectation is you're responding to emails 24 hours you're signed up for 11,000 committees and this this that and the other thing and there's no boundaries so you can't there's a lot of like challenges there i think with yes. people kind of saying they want like really wanting to do it but not really doing it mm-hmm. right in your research, have you found any apps that are very helpful in, in having us be grounded more in self-care and mindfulness that we could that we could use? Yeah, actually, the Calm app is really good. And for a while, they were giving uh, free memberships to educators. I'm not sure yeah. if they're still doing that, but that can be a kind of a fun one. I find that the app sometimes it's just like one more thing to do and one more thing to forget about. Mm-hmm. So I don't know, like if you're looking for a tool and you need those like reminders, like time to take a break, like time to do this. You know, you can just certainly use an app or even set reminders on your calendar. Like I'm not opposed to that. So we'll Mm -hmm. take a little break. Or if you wear a Fitbit or I wear an Aura ring, which is a similar type of data, like a Fitbit. And it will tell me like, um, you know, time to stretch your legs a bit or time to get moving. So like those things that give you that little biofeedback reminders, those can be helpful. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Is there anything else you'd like to share with my listeners regarding self-care and mindfulness? Yeah, I think one of the really important pieces for especially pre-service teachers, new teachers, and college students hoping to be teachers someday is boundaries and the importance of boundaries. Because you're going, it's easy to get swept up in the kind of excitement and chaos of a school and a classroom and all of that and lose yourself and your well-being in the process. All with good intentions. Right. But if you are not really clear with your boundaries you will ultimately you'll struggle as a result so things like how and when you respond to emails or you know do you close your door during the day so you can enjoy your 20 minute lunch break or whatever it is that you get or are you able to say to a colleague you know right now is not a good time I have to get x y and z done or like whatever it is and there's tons of things you can do but just really making sure you have those clear boundaries about 
you know, when people can access you and when they can't, because you have to protect your own energy. And I'm going to say it again, self-care is other care. So when you do these things and you set boundaries and you say no, you know, you're not being selfish, you're not being um, difficult. You're just trying to protect your own energy. I love that. And setting those boundaries is something we can start to practice in our college careers. Cause let's, we sometimes college students, I know you're listening, you overcommit to things. So Mm. you have your courses, you have your homework and your coursework, and then you have all the other socially, social life things that you can do. Be protective of your time. I'd say pick one, maybe two things you're super passionate about outside of classes and really dive into them instead of joining all the organizations and things and events and stuff. Um, Just be really mindful of your time and make sure that you're using your time management skills that again, is going to carry you throughout your college career and as a new teacher. Dr. MC, thank you so much for this beautiful conversation. I know I feel refreshed and I'm excited to go check in with myself on those domains. I have some work to do. We all have work to do. And this self-care process is not a sprint. It's a journey, right? It's a, it's Absolutely. something that we continue to work on. And it evolves over time. I mean, the practices okay. that I do now that feel good in my body aren't what I was doing necessarily, you know, 20 years ago. So yeah. it's a lot, you're allowed to experiment and try things and see what feels good and really just get in touch with what makes you you. So you show up as the best you possible. I love that. And it's different throughout stages of life too. So definitely change. Yeah. Thank you so much for this awesome conversation, Dr. MC. Can you please share about your work and where my listeners can get in touch with you? Yes, I would love that. So Dr. MC's self-care cabaret, I'm very active on social media, Instagram um, and Facebook and LinkedIn right now. I don't know, maybe a TikTok in the future, but it's at Dr. MC self-care. So that's D-R-M-C self-care. And my website, drmcselfcare.com is a great place to see what's going on. You can find my podcasts on all major platforms under the same business name, Dr. MC self-care cabaret. And there's so much to share and I love helping people. So definitely find me and let's connect. Awesome. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you, Dr. Sam. Have a great day. Yeah, you too. And there you have it, Edu Magicians. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe and share it with your friends. For more edu magic, check out sfesich.com and follow Dr. Sam on Twitter and Instagram at sfesich. Until next time, you have the edu magic within you.